So the other question we want to ask is what is the variance of W? The variance of W is the variance of X plus Y, right? In that case, it is always true that variance of X plus Y is you can split it out to variance of X plus variance of Y plus two times covariance of X and Y. So very interestingly, covariance pops back in again. Okay, and in the general case, when we scale X and Y, remember X is a little normal distribution or any other shape, and Y is yet another spiky normal or any other shape. So uh, we are trying to scale the two distributions, then combine them by adding the values. Then answer the question. What is the resulting variance of such a W, AX plus BY? And uh, in a way, it is not difficult. You just pull out the A and put a square there, yeah, because variance actually has a square inside. So when you pull out the A, you are actually factoring out the constant, but from within the square. So you have to have a square here. Likewise, you have to have a B square outside. But other than that, you simply just multiply by whatever knowledge of variance you have for x and for y. And for covariance, you need to pull out the a and the b, right? a from the x here, ax pulls out as a, by pulls out as b, right? Uh, then you have 2ab, covariance x1. So if we kind of uh, keep the first two terms and use the fact that the correlation, remember the correlation row is actually the covariance of xy divided by the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y. It's really hard to write here. So when we use this formula, we end up moving the denominator to the left side, all right, and then we can replace the covariance with rho times sigma x sigma y. This is often handy when we are unable to uh, obtain covariance directly, more because our calculator can give us correlation uh, much more readily than covariance. So we can obtain the correlation times the standard deviation of x, standard deviation of y, that's it. So that's another interesting thing. But other than that, it's really following the same uh, generic formula. Now, you see that I've uh, kind of gold-plated these formulas because they are extremely useful. They are extremely useful. Let's just do a quick recap of uh, expected value as well. So the golden formulas are golden because we can apply them whether X and Y are independent or not. Doesn't matter. So expected value of uh, AX plus BY it's always A times expected value of X plus B times expected value of Y, regardless of whether X and Y are independent or not. In the same manner, variance of AX plus BY is always A squared plus variance of X plus B squared times variance of Y plus 2AB times covariance of XY, regardless of whether X and Y are independent or not. And in the case when X and Y are really independent, more because the question told us so, or in our project, we know that they are really not much of a dependence uh, because of physical understanding or domain expertise, then we know for sure that covariance of xy equals to zero. And so the last term drops off, and we only have a squared times variance of x plus b squared times variance of y. So they are very robust, very solid, regardless of... Uh, the relationship or intermingling effects of x and y, you know, the y part, uh, the, 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 the inner workings part of x and y, whether they are very intricately related, affecting each other or not, totally not important. Uh, these two formulas, E of W, variance of W, still work. Really powerful. Okay. So even though for the third question, what's the shape of the resulting W, right? We talk about that. Uh, even though that is harder to, to generalize because it depends on the shape of X and Y. What is combined with what? And then we have to calculate that. 
So that part is hard to understand, uh, hard to answer without doing a lot of work. These two formulas can very quickly tell us, you know, two important um, tuning knobs, right? The behavior, the properties of W already, whether the resulting expected value is positive, negative, large or small, and the variance is large or small. Now, why would that be so important? Well, that comes in a lot because expected value can be the average um, distance travel, amount of uh, money spent, amount of profits earned. Then the variance tells us the fluctuations and sometimes the risk. High variance, meaning quite risky. Low variance, well, rather stable, right? pretty constant. So depending on the occasions, we might find large values useful or small values useful. But then at least we have the value to consider and make decisions.